All right. Everyone able to see my screen? Yep. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So um, thanks for that introduction, Kakani. Um, now I'm going to do a pretty deep dive on the FathomNet portal itself. Um, so if you if you remember back to what Kakani was saying about our use-inspired research, right? This is our platform to help answer a lot of those uh, themes. So what it is, is a collaborative, uh, opinionated or focused and interoperable platform for uh, image and video analysis, um, heavily skewed towards um, integrating artificial intelligence into the analysis pipeline. Um, we have a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep it uh, relatively high level, uh, but uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat and we'll have plenty of times to kind of dig into details when you get a chance. So for part one, I'm gonna kind of dig into the high level concepts uh, and project management tools. Uh, part two, going to go over analyzing media, um, both uh, manual annotation as well as AI assisted analysis. And then part three, exporting or sharing the results of the various analysis. Um, for part one, I'm mostly going to stay in this PowerPoint, uh, and then I'm going to head over to the platform itself to kind of give an example of what that will look like. Um, these high-level concepts, again, map to those use-inspired uh, research where we have the ability to have kind of uh, primary data posted or linked media, recognizing that a lot of people have different requirements on their uh, data sovereignty. Um, the ability to kind of organize your projects via nested folders and other characteristics, uh, manual and uh, AI assisted annotation. So this is where a lot of probably if you've had familiarity with other annotation platforms, we'll start to see a lot of similarities and capabilities for the manual stuff. Uh, and then some, some new and novel stuff, hopefully, uh, in the AI assisted version. One of those things has to do with how we handle the ability to kind of see your situational awareness of your entire video um, and the ability to select which algorithms are processed, um, the ability to um, bring in other sensor data and have that correlated in a uh, really robust way so that you can have overlays of data uh, for instance, depth, temperature, salinity, uh, and then to be able to automatically associate those things with observations. Uh, and then finally, the interoperable part is to export that data um, via you know, a couple different interfaces that will go to either your analysis scripts, um, that will go to your partner for training uh, algorithm data, uh, or could go to Fathomnet or OBIS or GBIF or something like that. Uh, and then finally, the ability to kind of do all of this in a way that um, lets you control access to your data uh, and define very strict user roles. So a couple of terms that kind of, I just want to go over really quickly because we're going to be using them a lot, but it's important that everybody kind of gets on the same page here. Um, terms you may be familiar with, but we'll definitely be familiar with at the end of this uh, presentation. So when we say localization, we specifically mean a region of interest in a frame of video or a still image. Uh, localizations in the portal are box shaped, so they have an X, Y width and height. Uh, a track or an observation uh, basically means that uh, video uh, observations or animals can span multiple frames, right? So when localizations are made and associated together, they are individually referred to as a track, and that track can have a start frame and an end frame in a video. In portal, everything is an observation basically. So that allows us to say manually drawn boxes are just an observation with a duration of one. Uh, and then when we say related data, we mean any sort of metadata that you may have collected, um, sensor data, um, all of that stuff is termed related data uh, in portal. QA, QC, um, I assume many people are familiar with this, but you know, quality assurance, quality control. Um, this is basically an important part of any sort of I guess, production level review workflow where you can set up multiple tiers of analysis before you get to your final export. Uh, permissions, 
projects and roles, uh, those all have to do with how you organize your project, right? They define permissions define what actions can be taken within a project for a user. Uh, projects define collections of media, uh, and then they organize roles associated with them. And roles basically are a described set of permissions. Um, and we'll go over the types of roles that are available in a bit. Uh, and then folders, obviously, are kind of a, a standard organization technique. So when you when you first log into Portal, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is create a project, right? Um, and just like we said before, you'll create a new project, uh, and then you'll decide how you would like to have that project uh, shared, either public, publicly, uh, restricted, uh, or private. Right. And so this is this is an important part of that kind of collaborative theme that we talked about before, where you can choose how to share your data at first uh, and then you can move between those layers. So if you have, for instance, say an embargo requirement on your data, you may start off as private where you then in, invite people into your project to do annotation, editing and verification. Uh, when that embargo is lifted, maybe you move it over to restricted or to public data. Uh, and be a, by being able to do that directly within the platform, it facilitates a lot of the uh, sharing that we were hoping to encourage. Um, the admin role is kind of like the highest level of permissions. And then that is the person who can transition the privacy of a project as well as add users. The roles that I was referring to before fall under these six categories. So a project administrator, who can edit all aspects of the project. Uh, an editor, um, this is someone who can upload media to a project as well as um, start to create and uh, adjudicate observations. Um, an annotator is someone who's been invited to the project uh, and can view and uh, all media and observations uh, and create and edit annotations. A verifier is someone who has limited permissions that they can view everything within the platform um, and they can then edit the annotations that have been made. Um, a lot of a lot of the projects and people that we've talked to like to bring in kind of phone a friend, third party experts just for this type of, of um, activity. And so we created a role specific to that. Uh, finally, a viewer is someone who just has essentially read only access to the data. Uh, and then the general public, if a project is public, can come in and examine uh, what's going on, but they still have to ask to be added to your project. So this this gives us a very fine grained control over what you can do uh, within within the pro uh, project. Uh, here's an example of how to set up a QAQC. An administrator creates essentially a public project, uh, and then they add an annotator, an editor, and a verifier. Um, the editor uploads and organizes the media, say from an expedition, into folders. Uh, optionally, they may choose to run an AI uh, or an algorithm on that data. Uh, and then an annotator and a verifier will go through and either review those AI-generated labels and then supplement them with their own. Uh, and then general viewers, uh, so the public can see but not interact with that data uh, unless they either are invited or request and are granted access into that project. And then the editor or the admin can then export the verified observations for any sort of use case. So for instance, to contribute to the FathomNet database or, or to train an algorithm with, uh, with the data that you have collected. Um, so now for upload and organize media, there's all sorts of things you can do. I'm going to switch over to the actual platform itself. Right? For example, here I've created a demo project one. The thing that you do for uploading data, pretty straightforward. Right? If you have, say, a handful of image, you can just kind of drag them over here. You can say where you would like them to be up to. You agree to the conditions. Uh, and then you'll just kind of get an upload uh, uh, modal here. When they're all uploaded, you'll see them within the project here. And then they're kind of ready for you to, to do anything you want with. Um, for longer, um, excuse me, for videos, they have to go undergo an under, excuse me, excuse me further processing. Um, so when you upload a video, it actually has to be transcoded so that it can be properly, um, I guess, 
streamed within the platform and is suitable for the types of annotation and sharing that we do. This is similar to how you might view something within YouTube, where when you first upload it, you may get a cursory view of it, but it's not available to be generally served until it's gone through transcoded, where they'll do multiple resolutions and multiple codecs um, available to, to make it optimized for various use cases. We do a very similar thing within the platform. Um, when you upload a video, you'll kind of see this message. Once the upload finishes, you'll see that it's being transcoded. Um, the transcode is in progress. Once it's complete, then you'll start to see um, the thumbnail and a little kind of uh, GIF will play over it when you hover over it uh, and you can launch into the platform itself. Um, so for example, here, um, I've gone through and already preloaded in data here. These videos are now available to be seen within the platform itself. Uh, and then we can launch directly into the player and start to do um, all of the kind of other things that we would want to do with the video. Uh, another option that you can do is essentially linking reference only media. Uh, and this will give you access to many of the data pipelines, but not the full annotations or analysis features within the platform itself. So if you have publicly available media, just like with FathomNet, if there are publicly available URLs, you can make that media available uh, by pasting that URL in here. Uh, and then what will happen is that you will get the option to see it as being cataloged within the platform. Uh, so you can be in a portal project, it can be in a folder, you can apply algorithms to it, um, you can get the results of those algorithms exported in CSV. You cannot play that video uh, within the portal. Uh, and in the future, we'll be able to do um, direct observations, uh, graphics grabbing from those linked videos, as well as frames in the future, if you agree to have that happen. Uh, the reason that it cannot be played in the portal is because of that transcoding process I mentioned earlier. Um, since these are read-only aspects, we're not actually ingesting that into the platform. Another subtler version of that, uh, which is of probably interest to you know larger institutions with their own cloud resources, is we can actually set up to host large corpuses of your video on your cloud resources if you work with the portal staff in order to give proper permissions such that you can then ingest your data into the portal while still having it hosted on your own cloud resources. Uh, this is an example of what linked media will look like. Um, once you analyze it, it will show up as fully analyzed. It'll show you the number of observations, uh, and then you can get a, a quick view of what's in that uh, and then export that data in CSV. This is very useful if you just want to have uh, access to any sort of algorithmic uh, pipelines. Similarly, if you want to up upload related sensor data, um, we have a requirement on the fields that you can put in there. Time, temperature, depth, latitude, longitude, salinity, and oxygen. These are all rows within a CSV file, which will allow us to standardize and overlay that video. If you have extra fields within your, your metadata, such as like a notes field or any other sensors, those will be preserved uh, so that you can see them upon export, but they won't be ingested into the platform for uh, indexing, searching, or viewing as an overlay. Um, this is an example of what, what that looks like, you know, frame 0, 150, 300, what the temperature is, oops, um, depth, position, salinity, et cetera. Uh, and what happens is um, these get interpolated between the frames in a video such that you, with every frame in the video, even if you don't have a sensor reading, you're still able to um, see that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so once the data is actually uploaded into, into the platform, you have the ability to um, see uh, and move around all of the all the data, right? So this is an organization aspect. If I go back here into the actual project, what I may want to do um, is create a new folder. Uh, in this case, say for reviewer number one, uh, and I want to give... Uh, reviewer number one, their own uh, batch of media to review. So I will go through and I'll select these here, say, and I would move them into reviewer number one's um, folder. 
Uh, and this is a way for them to essentially know what data is assigned to them. Uh, and then when we get to the QA, QC aspect, we'll essentially start um, talking about how you can then filter down further. Um, so that essentially goes over the uh, project management aspect of things. That's kind of the end of part one. Um, yesterday, we had discussed breaking up the QA, QC into three parts. Are, are we skipping that or are we going into that? I think it's a good idea to do it now. Otherwise, okay. coming back to this later. Yeah. So if anyone has any questions related to the content that Ben just shared, please um, put your question in the chat. Also, feel free to, we're a small group, so feel free to unmute and ask if that also works. Um, Hi. Um, thank you so much, Kakani and Ben, to show this portal. It looks super exciting. I have just one quick question. Um, I saw how you can customize the privacy of the different projects. If you choose um, a private um, project, uh, would that be completely private or would the data that you upload uh, um, be used to internal inside the portal? So for example, to retrain um, pattern net models. Um, I think we're still finalizing the data agreements for that, but by default, private data is private. We don't assert any kind of roles uh, or rights over it just by uploading into the platform. Uh, and that would probably be negotiated if you're part of a large institute on a case-by-case -case basis with how that data gets used. But generally, if you have the ability to create private data, you can be assured that the data is, is private until you give permission for someone else to use it. And Brian, you've got your hand up if you wanna unmute now. Thanks. Um, so with if you have still images as a linked data set can you view those and do manual annotations on them not currently but that is in the future pipeline because images are a lot easier to handle than video are so okay. um for the purposes of creating a consistent kind of definition of what linked media are that is not currently possible um the other reason is that there are complexities associated with having guarantees about the availability of that data uh, and how that could potentially break the platform. If you decide all of a sudden to just take that server down, um, then there's going to be a bunch of broken links to that within the platform. And so we haven't resolved that yet or, or what that means. Okay, follow-up question then. So if you take a linked video data set and run a classifier on it, the only output you get is the CSV with the pixel count for the frames and a, whatever the classifier ID to that is, is the only way to like visual, there isn't a way to visually see what the classifier drew the boxes on linked video. That's correct. Right. Thanks. 